We're looking at the E124 control board. We're going to be going through the basic programming on this system. So in here I have an XF receiver which normally comes with the kit plugged in already. I'll be using a remote control and I have one motor attached to the system. There are also three links already in place. This is to link out input 3, input 4 and input 5 as they are all normally closed circuits. Input 4 is the opening safety, input 5 is closing safety and input 3 is an emergency stop circuit. Input 2 is a pedestrian open command. If it's a double gate it only opens the master gate, motor 1. If it's a single gate it opens the single gate only halfway. Input 1 is a full command opening. So at the moment we don't have anything plugged into the bus either. We'll show you how to run through the bus configuration on the video later. All FAT control boards use the same plus, minus and F to program them in. As soon as you learn how to use one, you'll be able to use them all. What I'm going to do is, because during the setup, I'm going to want to potentially give it a open command, depending on what configuration I have. So I can either use a link wire, to basically give it a command across input one and ground, or I can program a transmitter. To make it easier on this particular demonstration, I'm going to program the transmitter in. Programming a transmitter with the XF receiver plugged in is very easy. All you need to do is press the plus button so the R1 starts flashing. On the remote control, press both buttons down simultaneously so the blue light's flashing and then hold the button you want to program. In this case, number one. The R1 will call on steady and go off. Let go of the transmitter and press the transmitter twice now. The first time, will basically register and the second time is when it will give it an opening command. So this is now able to give us opening commands to the board when we're running setups or to basically allow us to control the gate easily. So now we can go through the programming. So the function button basically goes through all the different parameters and the plus and minus adjusted them. So if you press F first you'll see the two back-to-back -back C's for Simply Connect. There'll be a separate training video on how to connect using Simply Connect. The CF is the main parameter we need to change. By default it comes to zero and we can adjust this accordingly. So zero is a non-FAC motor. One is for the 412, 413, the 770s or the 390s. Two is for the 391. Um, articulated the armor operator. Three is for the um, old style S700, S800s with the incremental encoders. Four is for the S418. Five is for the S450H, our hydraulic 24 volt on gate operator. Six is for the S700, uh, sorry, S800 encoder, the absolute system. And seven is for the S2500i, our integrated uh, operator that fits on top of the post uh, on which the gate's mounted. So we are going to put this back to a four for the S418. The DF is a default is where you can default the board back to factory settings. When it's on the white, it basically means all your settings are still factory default. When that changes to a no, which I'll illustrate uh, shortly once, as I go through and I'll go back around for a run the setup. That basically means that something has been changed from the default. If you change it to a Y, that will load all your default settings back in again. Press F, you'll see to the logic. Hello. So E is semi-automatic. That is one command to open and the same command again to close it. It is recommended that you leave the gate during commissioning in this particular format. So that the gate doesn't try and close by itself because at the moment all of our safes are linked out. You press the F button again, you'll see NN. This is the number of motors. By default, it's set to two. So if I have two motors, I'll leave that at two. On this one, I'm only using one, so I'm changing that to a one. Now the system will automatically remove parameters such as the F2 for force on motor two, because you're already told it only has one motor. We'll also take out things like closing delay and opening delay functionalities from changing the parameters, because it already knows you only have one motor attached to it.
If your Italia has two motors, then it will add you the option for closing the delay and opening the delay respectively. If I press the F button, you'll see F1, that's force one. So default is 25. One is high, 50 is high, one is low. So by default it comes to 25. What you're looking for is you should be able to quite comfortably be able to stall the gate in the slowdown phase so it doesn't, uh, it can't essentially crush an adult or a, a child on it. So you essentially, you back off the operator until it still moves and it's just right. But the gate should not be able to drag you along the, the floor to, uh, until you're in the crush position. So adjust that value down accordingly. I'm going to leave it on 25 for default for demonstration purposes. SP is your speed. So this is set to a 08. It goes from one low, 10 high. So adjust this down, I usually suggest. I usually tell people to put it into a five and then adjust up if required. Press the F button again, you'll get the EN. That is encoders. So the S418 doesn't have encoders by default, so automatically the function is no. If this was attached to a S450H or either of the S800 variants, then that would be a Y because it's expecting an encoder to be fitted to it. If you even, if I wanted to, you could in theory add an encoders to the 770s and the 413s and the 415s can have encoders added onto their brackets. And then this parameter can be changed to a Y and enable the functionality. If I press the F button again, you'll see FA, that is open limit switches. Either it's either off or it's a once, uh, so it's expecting a stop position. FC is for the closed limit switch. So the FCC1 and FCC2, for example, same options. BU is for the bus. So by default, as it comes out, it says no because there's nothing attached to it. If there was something attached to it, I would press the plus and the minus buttons together until I see a Y. And then I will let go and it will register something. If I had encoders attached to it, you will see three lines on the right hand side. There will be a top, middle and bottom. Top for encoder one, middle for bus on, and the bottom one on there will be for encoder two. As there's nothing attached to it at the moment, it says no. So if I press the F button again, you'll see N1 and two dashes when I let go. This is essentially now dead man functionality movement of motor one. In order to run a setup on a E124, we need to have the gate in the closed position. So at the moment, the gate is now in a halfway position. So if I hold the minus button, the space says seal and the gate should go to the closed position. So I can take it all the way there, and I can also bring it all the way back in the open, in the demo functionality. Take the gate all the way open. Now, as I said before, the E124 needs to have the gate in the closed position. If I was pressing the plus button for OP, and the gate was closing instead of opening, I will need to swap the polarity on these two terminals here. That's a 24 volt system, so you just need to swap them over. Make sure your motor is running the correct direction and then put it in the closed position. So that means basically hold the minus button until the gate goes all the way to its closed position. So that's the gate now fully closed. You can then do the same thing. If it was a double motor, you would have, you would have gone through N2 first for motor two to close first, and then N1 like we have here. And then we go to TL time learning, the same as all fat control balls, and press and hold both the plus and the minus together at the same time to start the time learning. The display will change to 51 and it'll be motor one moving. You can either let the motor go to the end of its travel, or if you have encoders, you can also tell it to stop at a particular position. So in this particular case, I'm going to let it carry on through its configuration. So 51 is step one for motor one opening. Then the display will change to 54. If this was a double gate, it will say 52 because it'll be motor two opening. Then it would say 53 for motor two closing and then it will go to 54 or step four for gate motor one closing. So this is now the gate will go all the way to its closed position. 
Once it's fully closed, you'll then see 55, and it will open at a faster speed. Now it goes to S5, and it will basically be going at the speed that it was set to. So now this is the motor going back to its open position. And then you have finished lastly with 56, which you'll see shortly. And now the gate will start to close again on 56. It's a little bit faster. At this stage, the display will automatically change to 00. So you no longer have the flashing 50 and the alarm light or the error lights are no longer on in that position. So at this stage, we can now give it a command. So I'm going to use a remote control. I'm going to press button one, which will initiate channel one, which is an open A command. And the gate will now go open and stay open until I press the button again. The R1 came on to see that it received the signal. O5 is the gate that's opening. The gate's going into a slowdown phase. And comes to a rest in the open position. And the display will change to zero 01. That's the gate open. Because we have the unit set to logic E, it will only close when I press the button again. Or when I give it a open command via wire. So I'm going to do that by shorting terminals input 1 and ground, terminals 1 and 2. You can now, if you're testing for forces, you can adjust the forces using the F1 parameter. Remember, every time you change the force, you should rerun the setup. But you can also adjust the speeds up and down. So at the moment we're on speed 5, we can up this and go to maximum speed for argument's sake. And we can exit the program quickly by pressing and holding the F button and pressing minus at the same time. The display will go to ST for status. Let go of both, you see a Y. If you, if you change the programming parameter and you can't remember what you've done, you can change that to no and forget it. If you press the F button again, it will go back to default, and you can now give it an open command. And the motor will open faster. And still go into the slowdown position in the same place. Zero one for being open, and trigger to close. can also, if you wish, now go through and change the logic to see how it behaves. So if I press the F button until I see LO when I'm holding it, like this, and change the E to an A, then the gate's an automatic logic, and I'll now have PA, which is the pause time. Default's 30 seconds. For this demonstration purposes, I am bringing it down to five seconds. So you keep it, either keep pressing the button or press and hold and it goes down by itself. Again, you have PB, which is the pedestrian open. So how long that stays open for, which is default 30. And I can now skip the programming. So go F and minus to skip to the end and save. I want to press the button again. Still opens the same, so we've got 05. But now the display wants to turn in fully over position. Instead of saying 0, 01, will now say 0, 04. And then five seconds later, it will then start to close, like so. And then the display will go to 00. zero. Now we're going to add a set of plus beams in. They get wired into the bus terminal.
as per the instructions, make sure that the dip switches are the same on both sides. So in this case, I need to put this switch two into the on position so that they both match with each other. So essentially one is a transmitter and one is a receiver and point them at each other. I then need to go for the bus menu. And register the two new devices on the bus line. So if I hold the plus and the minus together at the same time. Turn to your Y and then let go. That gives me a single line. So that says there is something, i.e. these two devices, on the bus line. If I want to know what they're set at, I'm going to hold the plus minus. Sorry, the plus button. That tells me what they're registered as. And if I break the beam, obviously a bit difficult when they're in this close proximity to one another. When they're broken, you will see that that will change. And now I can exit the programming. So F and minus, ST and then a Y. And now, obviously breaking the beam doesn't do anything. Only that it will basically bring a red light on, on the bus. So if you see on the side we have the red light, because the beams are no longer seeing each other. And now I can give it a command. And we'll see what this will do. So the case opening. There you go. It took a reaction. Bring it back. Okay, carries on opening. So that these beams are set as opening slash closing safety circuits. Gate will go all the way open. It will go to zero four. Then it will wait five seconds, and then we'll start to close. Now, when I break the beam, because it's opening slash closing. It will do the same thing as before, but now it will go back to its open position. Obviously, from the quick start guide for the one two four, you can check what dip switchings, dip switch settings are set at to make sure that your photo cells work as you want them to do. I'll let the gate close now. Now, make sure they are lined up against each other. The lens needs to be fitted, because this is what the lens is what um, gets it transmitted, which is this one, to the receiver. And you can obviously adjust this from side to side. So you can go to the left, for example, Bit stiff at the moment but it can go from left to right and there is a little bit of up and down angle which they can take but not too much and if I disconnect the bus from it there's an automatic error because I've taken the bus beams away and I can go through and re-register without the bus So the current is expecting to have it. If I've taken something away from the bus, I need to re-register the bus. So that's plus and minus again until you see the Y. Let go and you have the no. So there's nothing attached to it now. Exit the programming. And you're back to default. And now we're back to giving it the command to open. Time out and close. So this concludes the basic programming of an In124. In the advanced programming, we'll look at the outputs and we'll look at slowdowns and the obstacle sensitivity settings of an In124. Thank you for your time.